Welcome to chapter 3, where life gets easier for a while because we're going to learn some differentiation rules that are going to make finding the derivatives a lot easier. <clears throat> Let's assume that we have two functions that are differentiable. That means the derivatives exist, right? And let's suppose that c and r, or any c and n, I, I guess I should say, are any real numbers. The first rule says that the derivative of a constant function is zero. And that should make a lot of sense if you look at the graph of y equals 5, for example. It's in a horizontal line, so you'd expect the derivative to be zero. Let's move on. Um, the derivative of x equals 1, the derivative of x equals 1. Uh, that seems reasonable if you look at the graph. Uh, let's look at this though. What is the derivative of x squared? Well, I think we've shown the derivative of x squared is 2x. Using the difference quotient you could do that. What's the derivative? I think we've even shown the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. There's a pattern here. Uh, it turns out, we're going to prove this in class, but the derivative of x to the n, where n is any real number, is equal to you bring the exponent down, multiply x to the n minus 1. You subtract 1 from the exponent. So for example, if y equals x to the 12th, the derivative becomes 12 times x to the 11th. It works for negative exponents as well. What if y equals 1 over x to the 3rd, which could be written as x to the negative 3rd then the derivative becomes bring the ex, uh, move the exponent in front, so negative 3 and then you subtract 1 from the exponent, so you get negative 3 times x to the negative 4 um, which could be written as negative 3 over x to the 4 you always want to get rid of your negative exponents it even works when you have um, fractional power, so for example, what if we have y equals the square root of x which is the same thing as x to the 1 half power then the derivative becomes, you bring the power down and you multiply times x to the power minus 1, which becomes negative 1 half. So when you move the negative exponent down to the bottom, don't you get x to the 1 half from the bottom, which could be written as the square root of x. There you go. So the power rule is by far the most important rule. We're going to use that a lot. All right, let's keep on going here. Uh, this one says the derivative of a constant times a function the constant factors out times the derivative of the function. This looks a lot like our limit laws, and it turns out isn't the derivative a special type of limit? So this shouldn't surprise you too much. So watch this. What if y equals 5x to the fourth, the derivative, the 5 factors out of the derivative, so what's the derivative of x to the fourth? 4 times x to the third, which comes out to be 20 times x to the third. Now there's even a better way to do it. You see the pattern here? The 4 comes down multiplies the 5, get your 20, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So let's say you had something like y equals 6x to the 7th, and you want to find the derivative. The 7 comes down, multiplies the 6, you get 42, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. Pretty nice, huh? Anyway, let's do a couple more. This one says the derivative of a sum of two functions, you differentiate each one. Again, that looks a lot like our limit laws, because it is a limit. The, the derivatives are a special type of limit, right? So this shouldn't be too surprising. When you differentiate a sum, you have to differentiate each one. Same with subtraction. So watch this. If y equals, say, 3x to the fifth minus 4x squared plus 11, the derivative becomes the derivative of each one. What's the derivative of the first? 15x to the fourth. What's the, the derivative of the second? It's going to be minus, remember the x when it comes out multiplies to 4, you get minus 8x to the 1. And what's the derivative of 11? Isn't it 0? So that's what your answer is. Okay? Now let's do the last one here. The derivative of x e to the x is e to the x. Uh, we'll talk about that more in class, why that's true, but what that means is if you were to take the graph of e to the x, and if you were to look at the slope of the tangent line and uh, plot the slope of the tangent line uh, as your y-coordinate, then you, to, to get the derivative function, it would land right on the function itself. I think we've done that in class. The, the graph of the derivative function is the same as the graph of the function, is what I'm trying to say. 
Anyway, so um, if y equals, say, 5 e to the x, what would be the derivative? It would be the 5 factors out, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, we'll do some more of those in just a minute. So what's the derivative of this polynomial function? It's actually not that hard at all. The derivative of this, by the way, you wouldn't want to use the difference quotient on this, would you? The derivative of this, you take the derivative of each one, you get this. The derivative of the first, it's going to be 5 times 12, which is 60, x to the fourth. Here we get minus 18x squared plus 2 minus 0. The derivative of the second one is the derivative of each piece. Remember, the derivative of 3 times e to the x is going to be 3 times e to the x. Here we get minus 15x squared, and the derivative of 11e, this is a constant. That's sneaky, isn't it? The derivative of this is 0. This one is a little bit sneakier than, than the others, actually. We don't know how to take the derivative of a function to a power, just x to a power. So I hate to tell you this, but you have to multiply it out. It would be helpful, though, if you know the formula for how to multiply out a binomial cubed. Anyway, you get to this point where you multiply it out. Now the derivative is the easy part. You get 24x squared plus 24x plus 6 plus 0. To differentiate this function, you first have to move the z to the third up to the top, call it z to the negative third. Now you can use the power rule. That gives you negative 18z to the negative fourth when you subtract one from the exponent. And your final answer, move the exponent down, make it a positive exponent. Negative 18 over z to the fourth. This next one's kind of hard. Before you can differentiate this, you're going to have to write it with fractional powers. And then when you move this x to the one half up, you get this. So when you differentiate, this, this is what you end up with, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. You see why this becomes a plus, 1 half x to the negative 3 halves? Now comes the hard part. When you get rid of the negative exponents, you're down to here, and it turns out the LCD is 2 times x to the 3 halves. That's why you have to multiply top and bottom of the first one by x, and your final answer becomes x plus 1 over 2x to the 3 halves. This last one, we don't have a rule to find the derivative of a quotient yet, so the trick here is to, is to divide every term by t squared. When you simplify, you get this, and then you bring your exponents up to the top, make them negative exponents, so you're set up for the power rule again. When you use the power rule, you get this, 3 plus 5 times t to the negative 2 minus 4 times t to the negative 3. Get rid of your negative exponents, and you get this. Now, the last step is to get the LCD here, which is t to the third. So the first one multiply by t to the third over t to the third, second one by t over t. Your final answer becomes 3t to the third plus 5t minus 4 all over t to the third. This last problem involves tinnitus, which is a ringing in the ears. Let's suppose a tinnitus sufferer finds that the loudness in decibels of the ringing is given by this formula, where t is in minutes. The question is how fast is the loudness of the ringing changing after four minutes. Well, whenever anything asks how fast, isn't that the derivative, right? So we want to know what the derivative is at four minutes, that's all. So you take the derivative, this is the function, so you take the derivative and you get L prime is 36 minus T squared. So all we have to find is L prime of four. What would the units be by this, by the way? Aren't they gonna be the units of L divided by the units of T? So it'd be decibels per minute. When you plug in 4 and simplify, you get negative 12 decibels per minute. So what, what could that mean? That's actually good, isn't it? If the rate of change is negative, that means it's going away. It's getting softer. So you'd say the ringing is going away at 12 decibels per minute. This actually reminds me of a story of a student who used to claim that whenever she'd get tinnitus, she'd just do some calculus problems and the tinnitus would go away. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, she said it, whenever she'd stop, it would come right back. Uh, yeah, she would do the problems, and it seemed to go away, and she'd stop, and it would come right back. It'd go away, but then it would come back. Go away, come back. Anyway. So, if you want to get rid of your tinnitus, Try doing the homework!